Okay, here comes the last question. Question four. In your introduction, you revealed the questions that haunted you aged six. What happens when you die? Why achieve anything? And I wonder if you feel you've answered them. Are we spiritual beings having a human experience? It's probably apt that we end where we began, and I'm also perfectly happy to end on a personal note. Um, well, the, the, as I have said in the introduction, uh, what I initially uh, did uh, um, in consequence of my childhood uh, worries was to, to make the decision to study the mind. It really seemed like the only worthwhile thing to do if I, that is to say my mind, is, 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 is all that I have and I'm going to lose it, uh, then understanding what a mind is. Uh, was the only worthwhile thing to do, to, to be as fully cognizant of, uh, reflective about and understanding of uh, what, it, what a mind actually is, seemed like the, the only worthwhile thing to do and the only thing that seemed to carry any prospect of breaking that sort of solipsistic cycle, of being able to get outside of the mind, uh, at least potentially, uh, uh, see something about it um, that cast a different light on how it works and what it's all about. So I did do that. Um, in the process, uh, I also underwent psychoanalytical treatment um, in the 1980s and 90s. And during that treatment, I, I came to an understanding of um, not overvaluing thinking, not overvaluing our capacity to be able to um, understand things. Um, I, I, it was a, a sort of a realization that you are a kind of cork on an ocean and that you know, you're not in control of everything and you don't grasp everything and so on. Uh, as a neuropsychologist, I sort of translated that also into uh, the thought that, or the recognition that we only have access to very limited information. We only have these five sensory modalities which sample the world, you know, and then there's only certain sort of possibilities of calculating uh, with the mental apparatus that we have, calculating uh, understandings of the limited information that we receive. So there's a sort of a humility was, I suppose, what I came to, a recognition that, geez, I just, there's so much I can't know. Uh, what I can know is so in, in, in intrinsically limited, uh, incomplete, and therefore untrustworthy. Uh, I'll do the best I can with the mental equipment that I have, but I mustn't delude myself in thinking that I can ever possibly know everything. And so I suppose that led to the last um, phase of all of this, which was the realization of the limits, not only the limits of thinking, the limits of reason, but also the limits of science, which is the best tool I've been able to find um, to answer the questions that uh, that so um, exercised me as a child and still continue to. That's the best tool that we have, science. But science has its limits. There are some things about which science cannot speak because science is only possible when you can make testable predictions. If you have a view about things, if you have a hypothesis, you believe this is how it works, you have to make a prediction which can be falsified from that hypothesis. And uh, if you think about these big questions, like um, what happens when we die, it is in the nature of death that you can never go there, test your hypotheses, and come back again. Uh, so there's a gaping hole in the fabric of, our, of, of what is representable to us. We cannot think about a situation in which we don't exist, um, uh, and we cannot have a, the experience of a situation in which we don't exist. Uh, you know, state the obvious. So it's easy to see why we have panic um, about this gaping hole. Why you know it's, it, it really feels as if you know this completely uncertain, completely unpredictable. So therefore, we build up theories, we build up hypotheses, the best that we can. Um, but whether they are in the nature of logical uh, or reasoned, uh, or in the nature of faith and spiritual hypotheses, they really are all on the same ground. None of them is testable. There is no possibility of falsifying any predictions coming from these theories. So we all do the best that we can. And the approach that I've taken is a scientific one in which I have hypotheses about what I think is likely to happen. Um, but I'm also aware that they are just hypotheses 
products of a very limited instrument. Um, and ultimately, I find I take comfort um, in the humility of, of accepting the limits of what can be known. So it's not as if I've conquered uh, panic or anxiety uh, altogether about mortality and the like. It's just that, uh, uh, and, and uh, it's just a matter of accepting uh, what we cannot know. So it's kind of comforting, it's kind of interesting to see what happens. And um, I certainly am no longer plagued by it. I think that understanding the nature of consciousness, that recognizing what consciousness really is, has had a profound effect on my approach to these sorts of questions. Recognizing that our consciousness is all that we have, that it's a representation of other things which in themselves we can't know, that we have feelings, which is the way we can know our bodies from the inside, that we have these sensory impressions, which is the way that we can know the world outside, that these contents of our consciousness, uh, this bubble within which we exist, doesn't represent things as they actually are. It, it isn't a direct knowledge of the universe. It's rather a translation, um, a, a, a re-representation of it within um, the modalities that we're capable of. If you take that viewpoint seriously, then you understand what I mean when I say that one really has to approach all of this with a great deal of humility. So give yourself over to um, an acceptance of what we can't control. And um, although that doesn't give you a sense of order and a sense of um, being able to prevent what you don't want to happen, at least... Um, it, it, it makes you um, ha have a rather different uh, perspective on who you are and what you can do um, and what you have to just put up with. So uh, on, that, on that fuzzy old note, uh, we'll end. And I've enjoyed the course very much and I've enjoyed these question and answer sessions very much. Thanks for engaging so enthusiastically and intelligently um, with the content of this course. Bye-bye.